Well, we're live. How, what's going on? Hey, How what's up, everybody? How you doing, Freddy? Welcome back to another real estate show. It's me, Jose, over here, and Freddy, or preferred lender. What's going on, buddy? Nothing much, man. Nothing much. We want to thank everyone out there coming out to the show today. Um, me, me and Jose are really out here just trying to educate the public, not only on, on the finance stuff, but also the real estate uh, uh, market and the options that you guys have out there. So thank you for tuning in. Uh, make sure that once you tune in, share a uh, comment. We'll be able to answer some of the questions while we're on. I think we're going to be on for a little bit, just answering some questions. So uh, shoot, shoot, go go right ahead, Jose. Let's, let's uh, get it rolling. All right. So um, one very uh, common question I get with the people when they're uh, trying to buy a home or they want to buy a home, they wonder if they have to get if, if they have to stay with the loan for as long as 30 years, which is, you know, uh, the normal normal length on a loan. Are there any options out there to pay down the loan or pay the loan before the 30 year period? OK, so. There's actually two answers to that. You have two questions, right? Do you have different products or different structures instead of a 30 year? The answer to that is yes. Okay. There's actually, you know, you have the option of 15 year fixed mortgage. Uh, you also have the option of arms. And I don't think we're going to arms today, but that's a little bit different, even though it's a good strategy as well. Um, but to answer the other question, do you have other payment options? You do, which is uh, something pretty interesting because I have clients ask me sometimes, hey, Freddie, is it better for me to just go 15 years on it? Because sometimes the rate is a little bit better on 15 years. And it really has to do with the individual, right? Because mathematically speaking, you can still pay off your mortgage in 15 years, but can you commit to the higher payment? You, you get what I mean? Yeah. So when you say, um, I got to interrupt you for, um, for a minute. When you say the 15 year is a better rate you mean is actually lower than the 30 year loan? Correct. If you can fully commit for a 15 year loan, you're generally looking at a better rate. Um, hence, think about it this way. When you're buying a home, there's an investor attached, whether it's Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, the government, whatever it is. If you're, if you're telling them, hey, listen, I'm going to pay you off in 15 years instead of in 30 years. They're like, well, you know what? That's not as much risk, right? It's half the time. So let me go ahead and just a little bit less interest. I'll give you, it'll be a little bit less interest because you'll be paying it off a lot sooner. Okay. I see. So, all right. Like what, what can somebody do to pay a 30 year loan faster? So um, do I have to make extra payments or what, what other structures are out there available for somebody that wants to pay uh, that loan faster? Gotcha. Okay. Great question. By the way, a uh, shout out to Lani. Thank you for coming on to the show. Any other questions you have, just let us know. I'm actually going to put her question up here because it, it lines up with what you just finished ask, asking Jose. Um, so how much higher can the payment be? And to your question is, well, how can you go about that, right? The payment. Well, if you have a 30 year, okay, and you were to send a little bit more a month, actually, I had done the math for you. So check this out. You have a $300,000 pro a loan, right? And you got the loan at at 5% for 30 years. 300,000 5% for 30 years. It's going to be similar if it's 4%, 6% or whatever. I just chose 5 as a simple number, okay? If you were to go ahead and say, "Hey, listen, I want to go ahead and pay my mortgage off in 20 years." Right? That means you got to put a little bit monthly. You'll have to make an additional $369 payment monthly to your mortgage okay so if your mortgage was 1610 now you're paying approximately 1900 and you're saying well okay wow i saved 10 years what you really save on though is the interest because if you were to to send that additional payment you would be saving a hundred and four thousand dollars in interest big deal so, <laughs> yeah, huge <laughs> deal. So uh, my recommendation is send the a little bit extra and save $100,000 later on. Now, what I like about the, the 30 year is the fact that you have that option, right? Because life happens. And, you know, I if you're perfect with your finances, you have a ginormous savings. It's great. But not everyone is in that position, right? So if you can position yourself for a 30, but they make extra payments, you're going to save yourself a whole bunch of money. 
Lenise is saying that is she's saying that she wants to do this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, we're we're working together, and you guys are definitely gonna get it done fairly soon. And this is actually a great strategy, which um, I'll be coaching you guys on. Uh, one thing that Jose doesn't bring up is that Jose does what we call an annual review, the same way that I do, uh, which is once you're a client, you're not just a client for the transaction. You're you're a client every single year, half a year. Throughout the whole time, we develop a relationship with you. Um, if the market changes, you're going to know about it from a professional view, not from the media, which is six months too late, but from us in the market. Uh, and annually, we can always say, hey, listen, these are good opportunities that you have, you know? Yeah. Um, she got another question. She says, um, if you did a 15 year, would it be approximately that amount more per month or not really? Approximately, yes. But remember, the rate is different. OK, so the rate being a little bit different, the math is also going to be a little bit different, too. As a matter of fact, what I'll do is in the comment section of this video, I'll probably put two different structures. One that is three hundred thousand at five percent with that payment, which you'll see here for 20 years, the three sixty nine plus a sixteen ten. And then I'll go ahead and I'll put, let's say, a um, a 15 year at like four and a half. That way you can go ahead and see the difference that it'll probably be 50, 50 bucks, a hundred bucks different a month. Um, Freddie, I see that you put a 20, right? Which is what you just talked about, 369, and then you put 15. Yep. That's um, the amount that you will pay. And all these is, um, these are not real numbers. These are like um, estimate um, yeah, these, of these a are... certain amount. Mm -hmm. So the 15 year will cost pro approximately that much in order to pay that loan in 15 years. Correct. Additional additional payments that you would be making. Correct. Now, as you were pointing out, the savings on that one is 152,000. Wow. That that's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's a lot of money. And what what's interesting is the way that the world is structured today, if you're not aligning yourself with people that can actually inform you of this, you go ahead and you lock yourself up into a 30 year, you pay the mortgage off in 30 years, and you don't realize that you paid $300,000 more in interest. Now, uh, let me ask you, that same payment right there, um, that's monthly, right? Cool. Can I just make one payment one time in, in a year? So instead of paying all these in, uh, per month, can I just make one payment? You can, you can as well. The math is going to work a little bit, a little bit different, but it's fairly, very, very, very close. You can go ahead and make a, a chunk. You can commit to it six months out of the year. You can commit to it eight months out of the year. The whole, the whole point of this concept is, we live in a world right now that the super, the superficial matters to a lot of people. Right. However, a little bit of this wisdom on the finance side, if you can position yourself as of now to that extra money, instead of spending it out on the car, right. or the, whatever it is that, that's, that you want to go ahead and get, put that towards the mortgage. Because what's going to happen is that money you're going to free up is going to be something that in the future, now you have a house. If you want to go ahead and, and cash out again and, and, and pay for your children's university. And there's a lot of options that you have if you pay down your mortgage a lot sooner. You be, you're in, a, in an equitable position a lot sooner. Exactly. Yeah. One way to see it um, is you're putting it into an, a savings account. So all that money is going into a savings account that you can use later on in the, in the future, like you said. And yeah. Yeah, um, there is another question. Uh, you have to specify to the bank that you're putting that towards the principal, correct? Okay, she's so, right. it, yes, she's right. Now, this is the thing. S some banks are different than others. Like one of the biggest servicers in the United States is U.S. Bank, right? And if you call U.S. Bank and you let them know, I'm going to make a principal payment every single month, they'll say, hey, just send it at the end of the year, okay? Um, and they'll mm. go ahead and just deduct it directly from from the, the principal. Um, I always say disclose that on the check that you're sending in at the memo part, put, you know, principal payment. Uh, make sure you call them and say, hey, principal payment. Uh, because at the end of the day, the other person on the other side, they're just doing their job, right? They receive the payment, they process the payment, they move on to the next, the next loan that they're servicing, right? So we can't get upset at someone that has to do this a thousand times a day 
if they weren't informed of this particular payment being towards principal. We expect right. everyone to obviously always have that mindset, but I definitely suggest that you go a little bit above and beyond to inform them of saying, hey, listen, uh, this is this is for principal. Yeah, for sure. I have to stay on top of that. Yes. Nice. Awesome, Freddie. Well, that's a great piece of information right there. A lot of people is always uh, asking me this, the ones that wonder. There is some people that don't um, ask this, this question because probably they don't know whatever or the information haven't hasn't crossed in front of them, but that's what we're here for, to uh, let everybody know about important topics that uh, in regards to real estate and buying a home and et cetera. So thank you so much for that. No, man, thank you. Next time, let's do a segment on on arms. I know that, that a lot of people from 2007, 2008 don't like the adjustable rate mortgages. A explain real quick what's arms for, because I'm sure a lot of people is probably not gonna have any idea what that is. Got it. What's so, the meaning of ARMS? So ARMS is an adjustable rate mortgage. It's a mortgage that has a fixed portion and then starts to adjust. And we'll go a lot more in depth to it, but there's different types of, of ARMS. I mean, you can have a, a one-year ARM, a three-year ARM, a five-year ARM, a seven-year ARM, a 10-year ARM, right? The benefit of some of these ARMS is that you get a better rate initially. So on the next show, let's calculate the difference in someone that gets an ARM that's a 7-1 hybrid and how much they save in the first seven years, and then use the statistic that most people refinance from five to seven years and they can take advantage of those savings. I'm already excited about this topic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a yeah, strategy. No, I, it's a as strategy an investor's view as well, yes. Yeah, a lot of people are still scared about it because of the conversations that were had in 2005, six, and seven, how things were adjusted. But there's a lot more things in place now to make sure that you are always protected. And realistically, as professionals, we're going to get you in there and then refinance you before just so that you can go ahead and save those mon that money. Exactly. It's like what we have said before is access to information. You know, like um, people, they hear adjustable rate and they probably get afraid because of what had happened in the past. But it's yeah. also no uh, access to knowledge. There is There are reasons out there why these loans are available. And it's, um, we have to be, as a, from an investor's view and as a buyer, you know, from the customer's view, we have to know what we're getting into and how to use these tools that are out there for us to allow us to buy a home. And I think that's key, you know, when we're getting involved with real estate. Exactly. So we'll definitely shoot for the next one on that one. So guys, thank you very much for tuning in. It, it, it means a lot to us. Uh, our next one, we're, I'm, I'm thinking, Jose, we're going to be coming in back in on Monday, right? Yeah, that's right. On Monday. Good. So Lani, come right back and actually some of those answers I'll have for you ready on Monday so we can talk. We can actually dive a lot deeper into that topic. And that day when people are there, then I'll answer that, those specific questions for you guys. Okay. So you guys awesome. have a good one. Thank you for tuning in. This is also going to be released on the podcast. Jose, how can they get a hold of you if they need some real estate advice? Uh, they can look me up on Instagram, Jose Jaramillo85. Uh, they can send me a, a mess, a, a text message there or whatever. And I'm, I'm always available. I always do my best to respond to everybody as fast as possible. So, so yeah, just shoot me a message. Awesome. Thank you very much, guys, for tuning in. We'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. All right.